Welcome to episode number 122 of the Life Changing Questions podcast. And today I have a wonderful uh, coach, mentor, and friend of mine. Her name is Maya Pleggett. Maya is the founder of Mind Motivation Coaching, and she is a transformation and abundance coach. She empowers her clients uh, to build confidence, improve their career, uh, help them maximize and create wealth. Uh, she works with them in their health and their wellness. She's an expert in the principles of rapid transformational therapy, positive psychology, neuroscience, quantum physics, law of attraction, and creative visualization. Uh, her mission is to globally create a ripple effect of empowerment, transformation, and inspiration in a personal and business uh, growth and development. So uh, Maya, welcome to the show. We're so, look so looking forward to hearing from you today. Hi, great. It's, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Now, Maya, what I didn't add in the bio there is that uh, you are someone that I've trusted now, I, I think probably for three, four years, uh, maybe longer. You're the person that I go to when I need something changing in terms of my psychology and my mindset. You've helped me over some big hurdles, uh, things like stop eating sugar, which uh, was a, a goal of mine for a while. And I tried everything. I tried the willpower method. I tried reading books, watching videos. Uh, and none of it works. But within a few sessions with you, we uh, completely reshaped that. And now I can say uh, I'm in control of that uh, the habit and I can I can uh, make powerful and empowering choices around that. So Maya is uh, is not just someone that I've uh, plucked off of the internet to do an interview with here. This, Maya is someone that I, uh, I trust and you know, use the services of myself and recommend to my family. So Maya, um, with me saying all of that, I, I'd love for you to share a little bit around uh, what is what a little bit more detail around the work that you do? Uh, how is it that you are able to help people in such a uh, rapid and powerful way? Well, I did a lot of training and my last lot of training, which is about seven years ago, it is called rapid transformational therapy. And it really works at the subconscious level. So people can, we've got two parts of our mind, the conscious, which is 5%, which is where our willpower is and that conscious part. And then we've got 95% of our brain, which is the subconscious. So the work that I do is I work at that subconscious level because the subconscious is over a million times more powerful. So you might be thinking in that 5%, the willpower, well, I want to, you know, I want to be healthy, I want to be fit, I want to go up the career path, I want to open my own business. But if we've got the underlying programming in the subconscious part of our mind, that negative programming, negative belief system of perhaps I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not capable enough then those two, conscious and subconscious, are in conflict. So when we work at the subconscious level, which is what I do, we go to finding out, because we can't fix what we don't understand, what belief system or what negative programming that's been instilled from childhood, what that is, and then we can address it, we can release, we can heal, and then we can embed with new empowering positive programming new empowering belief systems of I can do whatever I set my mind to I can achieve that my highest goal I can start my own business I can go up the career path I am confident I'm you know lovable I'm you know all these things and for me it's the most incredibly rewarding career I just love being able to transform people's lives and now because of all the experience that I've had, I know that I can, whoever comes in front of me, and I work a lot with people uh, on Zoom, like in America and uh, the UK and over east in Australia, uh, Canada, that whoever comes in front of me, I know I can help them 100%. And it's just an amazing feeling. And to see the client, you know, even from the first session, start to have aha moments and and I share with them how they can collaborate with their mind and they just it's just like this huge switch has happened and they can then start to get excited about their future because they've been given the tools resources techniques practices of moving forward because they've released what's been holding them back from that subconscious level so yeah it's really cool it uh, is really cool indeed. And knowing that you talk about it is your subconscious. Typically, these aren't things that we're, we're really aware of. They can become automated and they're typically running in the background so that they're not uh, up front and, and close to us. If there's someone listening on the call today and they're feeling blocked or held back in 
you know, a certain area of their life. Is there something they can do or some way they can look at this to begin to identify what are these, uh, what are some of these negative programming or these, um, you know, limiting beliefs that you mentioned? Absolutely. There's, there's three things that, that can help us identify what we are, what, what our reality is and what we're attracting or manifesting in our life. And the, the first thing is, you know, but whoever's listening is to be aware of your inner dialogue of what thoughts are looping, 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 like um, all the, the top people, the science, you know, neuroscientists, people like Dr. Joe Dispenza and Dr. Bruce Lipton, they all say that we've got between, we have between 50,000 and 60,000 thoughts a day. I, I always so, wonder who, who counts those. I just. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, I'll take, I'll take, if those two are telling, you know, sharing that with the world, then they, they know what they're talking about. And however they came across that, then okay. But they, let, you know, 50,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. We all have that amount. So if those thoughts are negative, as in, I can't do this, I'm exhausted. I'm not smart enough, I'm not intelligent enough, I'm not capable enough, I'm not attractive enough, I'm not young enough, I'm not old enough. All the I'm not enoughs, and there's, there's many of them, and I've heard pretty much all of them from working with my clients, then that's downloading into our subconscious mind. So every thought that we have are self-fulfilling prophecies. So if we have the I'm not good enough, I'm not capable, I can't do it, I cannot do it, then we're sending that direct message to our subconscious mind, can't do it. So if we're saying that 50,000 times a day, then the subconscious doesn't know the difference between what's real or what's imagined. So it just believes, takes literally every single thought that we have as literal as the truth and as it's now. So the first tip would be to be aware of those thoughts because we all do have thoughts and we all have a lot of thoughts and they are 80% of the time they are exactly the same thoughts as we had yesterday. So let's say one's a 35-year-old person and each year of their life they've been looping, looping, looping with their thoughts of, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not intelligent enough, then they are sending a direct message to the subconscious mind. Basically, every thought that we have is directing, commanding, instructing our subconscious. And then our subconscious mind believes it to be true. That's why we get self-sabotage, because we're telling our mind over and over again, you can't do it, you're stupid, you're dumb. Whereas when we are aware of those thoughts, and this is the solution, then we challenge that thought. Hmm, is this thought empowering me? Is this thought moving me towards my biggest, hairiest goal? Is this thought making me feel good? Is this thought making me feel empowered? Is this make, thought making me feel lovable and good enough and worthy enough? If the, if the answer is no, then we have control. The two things, well, the three things that we have control over are our thoughts, what we visualize in our mind, and that's the second thing that we'll go into. The second thing, apart from our thoughts, is what we visualize in our mind, what we project in our mind, what we imagine in our mind. So let's say someone who's anxious or depressed, that reliving or replaying things, negative things that have happened in the past, or they're projecting negative things that could happen in the future as in worst case scenario. So their mind is trapped and once again on a looping thing of, of always going back to that horrible time when somebody said something, always going back to that time when that, that boss said, you, you know, you, you're not, you, let's say you're fired. So if we're replaying that, if we're visualizing that, if we're imagining that negative worst case scenario in our mind, 
once again, that's sending a very direct message to our subconscious. This is true. This is happening right now. So that's why we'll get, you know, that adrenaline and that stress hormone cortisol because the subconscious mind thinks it's happening right now. So solution is to visualize and imagine best case scenario. Visualize and imagine what it is that they do want. Visualize and imagine ideal life. Visualize and imagine exactly what they do want to have happen. All the best opportunities, all the best possibilities. When they have that visual and image in their mind, once again, that's sending a very direct message to the subconscious mind. This is our destination. This, this, is, what, this is what we want. And then the third one, to, if you want to feel confident and motivated and who doesn't in these days, is to be very aware of one's physiology. So, for example, I've, I've never had a client come to me saying with their voice, but with their body language of their head down, their shoulders collapsed, and then sort of, you know, like they're sort of going into their own shell, um, I'm feeling happy, happy and positive. I'm really happy <laughs> <in> my <answer. laughs> Exactly. So once again, the solution is to have, you know, the, the three power poses. I don't know if any, have you heard of Amy Cuddy and her beautiful TED Talk, which is one of the most famous TED Talks or most seen, looked at TED Talk. And she talks awesome about- TED Talk. Yes, amazing. And, you know, a few of her power poses is, is with the shoulders back, you know, the, the typical Wonder Woman where you've got your <clears throat> on your waist and your legs apart like that, you know, power pose. Um, the other one is one is is like in the picture, you know, you, when you see elite athletes and they're, they're running through, you know, through the the the, the end, you, you know, they run the race and they go through that ticket tape thing. That's you no. Know, or you see tennis players or golf players, they all go woo like this, you know, basketball players, you know, whatever. That's another one, and then the other one. It's called the boss one, and that's when you're you're back. You like you like that. So if one is going into an interview or into a very important meeting or, or some, some situation where you want to feel confident is to choose or do all of those power poses. You know, you can go into the bathroom or, 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 or wherever, but changing our physiology can change our state. So the three important things, changing our inner dialogue, because our words are self-fulfilling prophecies. The second thing is to change what we're visualizing and imagining and projecting in our mind, change it to best case scenario. And the third is change our physiology, you know, doing the do, do, or, or whatever out of those three. Um, and then you will feel and note the difference straight away. Love it. Three very uh, powerful and immediately applicable examples there. So just get awareness of your thoughts. And uh, one way to do that is to pay attention to the things that come out, journaling, write them down, or even uh, if you've got friends or family around listening to this with you, get them to see if they can capture your words. Sometimes they're going to hear the words that come out of your mouth that aren't, aren't serving you. And if they can capture those words and, you know, uh, hold a mirror up and, and point them out, it may also uh, so help certain words trigger off certain emotions in you. And uh, just even changing those words. I had one client who changed their words from run and I'm stressed, I'm so stressed. She changed the words, mm -hmm. so I'm buzzed, right? I'm buzzed. And you know what? It, it, it was a subtle change, but it just made her see the situation differently and feel the situation differently. So actually the, the whole power of your thoughts and your words super, super key. Um, visualizing and seeing things the way you want them to be. My, that's that's such, uh, it's so easy for us to go out to the future and see things going badly. I know uh, you've helped me out with presenting and presenting. I, I'm not naturally uh, someone who wants to be in the spotlight and be on the stage. And so it was very easy for me to catastrophize and picture 
that going badly or people not liking it or me saying the wrong thing or losing my words, but actually in helping me visualize having a positive impact on that audience and seeing it going really well, made it a lot easier to step out on that stage, see things the way you want them to be. And your physiology, so important. I was talking about this uh, in a previous call with one of my clients who they got a, a sales member and that sales member is not performing very well. And we watched a video of them doing a sales call and guess what their physiology was like? Their physiology was not a physiology of excellence. Their physiology was very you know, slumped and disinterested. Of course, uh, that's going to come across with how you feel and how you portray yourself. So three really valuable uh, le uh, lessons and things we can apply there. Maya, what, one question I want to ask you. Uh, you were saying to visualize things going in the best possible way. What if there's someone on the call listening and they're saying, yeah, but okay, that's great. If I visualize things going in the best possible way, I'm not going to be prepared for the risks or the downsides. You know, I, I need to think about the negative things and bad things so I can be prepared. And I, I always need to think about the bad things so I'm prepared. How would you uh, help them that? What advice or input would you have around that? I would say to them, okay, great. So write down on a A4 bit of paper. So get a big bit of paper and put a line down it. And on one side, left-hand side, all the things that could go wrong or all whatever they're challenged with or all the negatives. If this, this could go wrong, this could go wrong, you know, all, all of what could go wrong. And then on the other side of that line, which is down the middle, is possible solutions to all of those things that could go wrong. So the more we focus on, yes, we'll focus on the reality. These could go, these things could go wrong. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, focus on what the possible solutions are. Really brainstorm, 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 go, you know, huge, 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 huge amount of solutions, thinking outside the box, all of that. Whatever we focus on, that's where the energy flows. So do we want to be focusing on all the things that could go wrong? Yes, we can do it once and then find out what the solutions are, work on what the solutions are. But knowing how neuroscience, neuroplasticity, quantum physics, law of attraction, how that works is like attracts like. So if we're focusing on all the negatives, all the things that could go wrong constantly, not just the once off and then we find what solutions are constantly, then that's where our energy is flowing. So our vibration, our energy is going to be radiating at negative. What if worst case scenario? And like attracts like. So when we focus on all the solutions and all the pos positive opportunities and possibilities, then we're radiating at solution mindset. And when we visualize seeing the best case scenario, then we are radiating a really high vibration, a powerful vibration. So we can be powerfully negative, what if, or what if, what if, what if, negative, negative, or we can be focusing on and vibrating on being on the frequency of what if best case scenario. You've already thought about all the solutions. You, you, you brainstormed all the solutions. And now we're visualizing that. It's like when we visualize, it's like we're creating a blueprint or a roadmap or we're creating a GPS for our subconscious mind to follow. So let's just plant a positive GPS for our subconscious mind to follow because our subconscious mind its number one job is to get us to what we're focusing on it's going to create more of what we're focusing on so let's focus on the positive solutions i love the metaphor of the gps it makes it uh, so easy to imagine what the brain is trying to do and so what we're saying with the mind if we can put in the vision of what we want then like is going to attract like. So if we uh, and use the term vibration, that frequency, if we're we're uh, emanating at that that level of happiness or joy, hey, we're going to attract more things in our life that bring happiness and joy. Or if we're stuck down in those lower level emotions, you know, whether it's grief, shame, anger, frustration, you know, any of those things, we're uh, we're contracting. We're likely to attract more of those. Uh, really brilliant examples, Maya. On this very topic, then this this question is is right up your street. I, I say on this uh, episode that the quality of the questions we ask ourselves 
impacts the quality of the life that we have. So with that being true, what's one question that you've asked of yourself or of your clients that's made a, a major difference? It would be what is well, my or your to the client, what is your ideal? What does your ideal life look like? Mm. So when we ask ourselves that question, we are focusing our mind on what it is, once again, on what it is that we do want as opposed to what it is that we don't want. So the more we think about what does our ideal life look like, then we can start to create a plan, a strategy, a direction. We start to create a schedule for the week or for the month or for the year. We start to get a big picture and then make that happen in, in you know, step by step by step, you know, increment, increment, increment. So for me, I think you might have asked me that years ago or something along those lines. And I thought, ooh, <laughs> well, that's a juicy <laughs> question. And yes, yeah, so and now I'm, I'm, I'm sharing that with, with my clients. What does it look like? What would you be seeing? What would you be feeling? What would you be doing? What would you be experiencing? When you wake up in the morning, how would that be? Who would you be with? What would your house be like? What car would you be doing? How would you be sharing your life? And who would you be sharing your life with? And the more rich that one can make it, then we're planting those seeds. Because every thought that we have, it's like we're planting seeds. So when we're planting seeds of what it is that we, you know, ideal life or dream life, then, then we're focusing on that. We're not focusing on the shitty little things that happen because life is always going to give us ups and downs and speed humps. But the more we focus on where we want to go and also enjoying and being in the present moment, then we are creating that roadmap or that path for our subconscious mind to follow. So yeah, I, I, I find that particular question and also, just to throw in a second one, would be, um, am I living my life in alignment with my values? So when, so when clients work with me, in pretty much the first session, we would be going over what their values are, which is, you know, some people don't know what values are. It's, it's the things that are most important that we have to have for us to feel good. So... For example, you know, mine are health, love, connection, uh, growth, and making a positive change. Transform. I love that. I, I love that, and it's uh, it's very clear in the work that you do, and you get to show up and live your values every day. These are two super powerful questions, uh, and we could go right to the heart of them. This whole question of what does your ideal life look like? Anyone listening on the call, just make sure you pause make some time to actually go through that and, and plan it out. Some people really like to sit there and write that out. Some people love to go in and get like a magazine, you know, and rip out pictures or Pinterest and bring together the pictures to summarize that. Um, hey, I, I've even gone so far at some point, Maya, with this question to, there was something called Mind Movies, I think, and you can pull together videos, uh, pictures, and you can put affirmations to it and music, and you can watch that video every day and, and that can help as well. So I think it's, it's such, such an important question. Uh, probably one of, one of, without offending the other guests who've been on the podcast, probably one of the better questions I've heard uh, in a while. And I think this really goes right to the heart of what people want. Um, I just want to share, I, I don't often deviate too much and share stories about myself, but I think this, this topic, I just want to reinforce it. When I first heard this or something similar to this, I was at a personal development event and they were saying that when you get clear on the things that you want in your life and you get, and you define it as being rich, but being specific, being really crystal clear on what you want, it's amazing how quickly things show up. And I was, you know, I was uh, a skeptical accountant at the time. Like, oh yeah, well, a crock of BS, whatever. Right, I'm here. I'm going to do the exercise. And I'd been single for a long period of time, and I decided that it was time for me to have a relationship to meet this ideal woman. 
And so I use that time to write down what my ideal partner would look like. So I got not even to what my ideal life would look like, what my ideal partner would look like. And as I'm doing this activity, I write down specifically, I wrote down, you know, 27, 28 different items on this list, you know, uh, age, you know, background, you know, into health. And there's all these different things that I've, I've written down. As I'm doing it, I'm getting to the end of it, I get a beep on my phone. And there's a friend of mine, um, a, girl, a girlfriend who I've known for many years. She never, ever set me up with a date, never matched me to me, but she messaged to say, um, I've met this girl. I think she'd be really great for you. Do you want to connect? And I'm like, I'm doing this activity now and I'm going to text about a date. Oh, all right. Well, I probably should do. Uh, anyway, I met this girl and uh, we got on very well. And I'm, you know, I'm proud to say many years on now, she, she's my wife. We, we got married. So uh, now six months after being together, we found this list that I'd written at a personal development event with this ideal uh, criteria that I wanted. And uh, she was game. We went through it and we ticked off all the things there, all 28 items, every single specific thing on there, she ticked off every single one of them. And so it's kind of amazing when you do that. Now, I joke with her now and say, wow, I wish I'd written on that list that you had a Ferrari, right? But, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, when we get really clear on these things, sometimes we, we don't know where they're going to come from or how they're going to get there. Um, mm -hmm. But hey, someone you know who's never set you up can actually be with that person right now and it could happen very quickly. So uh, without taking up all of your time to share, my, I just want to reinforce that point. Really take the time to write down what does your ideal life look like? Get really clear on it and you'll be amazed at what opportunities or what things can come your way that you haven't, haven't even thought of. Absolutely. I have, um, I have quite a few clients who come to me um, and they want to attract their ideal partner. And that's the first thing we do is, is to write a very specific and one of my fu <laughs> funniest um, examples is the client and she'd actually come to me in person um, and she was writing down. So I was also writing down just so that I had a clear picture of, of what she wanted to attract. Four pages later of wow. her. <laughs> and I went, oh, my God. I said, look, I'm getting RSI from doing this. <laughs> A few months later, maybe four, four months later, she sent me an email saying, Maya, I have attracted this partner and he can, I can tick everything off. Wow. And more. And I said, how could it possibly be it more? And she said, it is, it is. And yeah, just, just amazing. It is quite spectacular how quickly it can happen when we are specific when we're Absolutely. specific and, yep. and my I, I know you could probably share with us about the particular activation system and how that works what, what is it that happens in our brain that allows for that to to be created the reticular activating system is that what you're talking about yeah yeah how does this magic work we we write that shopping list we put it in our brain and then all of a sudden it shows up how, how does that work well, let's say, for example, you decide that you want to get a new car and let's say it's a, a red Ferrari, for example. When you're on the road next, you will start to see red Ferraris. And the thing is that those red Ferraris were there before, but because it wasn't important or you weren't interested, you didn't see them. But as soon as you started to write it down, think about it, perhaps visualize, go see them. Then your mind, because we have 100 million bits of information per second coming into our, our mind. So there needs to be a filter. And this filter is called the reticular activating system. That filter is switched on when it knows what we are interested in or what's important to us. So another example uh, is, when you are parents and you you know you're, you're you're pregnant and you as parents will start to see or per perspective parents will start to see babies everywhere prams everywhere all things to do with babies you'll just suddenly see stuff to do with babies and parents and and pregnant people and all of that because it's now important to you before it wasn't you know when you're single or whatever but they're always out there. So when something's important to you, that filter, the RAS, reticular activating system, will come through and you're looking through a lens of what's important to you because your, your mind is so powerful, it's so incredible 
That's what happens. We create a filter when we choose to focus on, let's say, the red Ferrari or um, uh, an ideal partner. Your eyes will, that, that lens will be looking through, you'll be looking through that lens. So it's, it's amazing because once again, we have 100 million bits of information per second. So there has to have a filter. Once again, if one's anxious or depressed, they are looking through the filter of the world is out to get me. There is no opportunities. People are bad or, or, or whatever. Whereas a positive, confident person, they look through the lens of life is wonderful. Life is full of opportunities. Life is full of possibilities. And people are there kind, supportive, you know. So we can choose the lens that we're looking through and that's what the reticular activating system does. I love that. We, so if, if this filter is gonna be there, we may as well put something good in the filter rather than something uh, that's unserving and unsupportive of us. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And you know, the, the more we know about the mind and how it works, the more we can collaborate and get our mind to work for us. And that's what I do in the first session fully. They get so many um, techniques and insights as to how the mind works. So tell us a little bit more about that, Maya, a little bit more detail. What's the experience for a client uh, when they work with you? So the first session, I would have sent them a client intake form. And in that intake form, they've got lots of, of areas where they can tick what it is that they would like to, to have support or, or things that are blocking them. So they have a, a, a huge amount of time to go through exactly what it is that they want to achieve, whether it be career, whether it be you know, starting their own business, whether it be having more confidence, whether it be a better health or what relationship, whatever. And then in that first session, we go through, so we get a very clear picture, you know, crystal clarity of exactly what it is that they want, what their big picture is, because once again, if we don't know what we want, we don't know what our ideal life is, we don't know what our ideal work-life balance is, and a lot of people don't, or they don't know what's holding them back, they don't know what's blocking them. So we get a clear picture of what it is that they do want, and then I share um, experiential experiences with them so that they can go through how powerful their mind is and they get their aha moments and then from that moment forward they know how to collaborate with their mind and then the second session is when we go into the hypnosis and hypnosis is basically allowing us to go back to in in our childhood, that's where this negative programming has come from. And a lot of clients will say, well, I don't know. That's my job. That's my area of expertise. I do know how to get to what we need to go. And that part, we need to do that. And once we've done that, we can clear, heal, and then embed the new and positive empowering suggestions and, and programming. And then the client will get a personalized recording. And all my clients absolutely love their personalized recording because it's, it's feeding into their mind, downloading into their mind everything they've told me that they do want to feel. So whether it's a, it's a, a business owner, they want to feel empowered, they want to feel, you know, uh, they're a great le leader and um, feeling confident, feeling motivated, feeling energized. So everything that the client has put in that first client intake form and everything that we've gleaned from us going into hypnosis, then all the new empowering stuff goes into the recording. So they listen to that. So they're downloading that each, each day. When they hear it, they just feel so empowered, like I'm directing them and using their words, you know, that resonate with them at that beautiful subconscious level. And then we have a coaching call, which is after that, which is just to keep them motivated, to keep them on track, to keep them supported, any coaching or, or any questions that they've got to uh, have answered. And then we have our last session, which the client will come usually saying, okay, so that's sorted now, Maya. So now 
I want to focus on my health or now I want to focus on my relationships or now I want to focus on that interview. So whatever it is that they want. And then we create a strategy for ongoing success. And I also create another recording for them. So that usually goes over a, a month and gives them a huge solid foundation for, for transformation, for change. They can feel the change even in the first session. So they get really excited they start feeling that positive expectation about their, their future. And yeah, it's very, very empowering for them. As a uh, customer who's been through this experience and journey with you, I can uh, certainly relate. It, uh, it's something that's very empowering. Uh, changes seem to happen uh, quickly or more automatically than you think. I, I was, I was, I wanted to give this a go with the whole sugar thing, but we started this right before my 40th birthday celebration, right before Christmas. And like, how, how, you know, I understand it's such powerful, but how on earth am I going to get through a Christmas, you know, uh, birthday celebrations without sugar? And I did. And it actually it was fine. I didn't even feel bad or awkward about it. So uh, now, not that everyone listening wants to stop a uh, sugar addiction or anything like that. There may be other mm -hmm. things as well. So, hey, my, if people wanted to get in contact with you uh, after this, you know, because you've given us a really powerful insight to the power of what you do, where would be the best place for them to come and find you? Uh, best place is onto my website, mindmotivationcoaching.com. And they can click onto that. And on the home page, there's a, a complimentary or a, a free raising your vibration audio. So if they click on that, pop in their, their email, um, they will instantly get a, a, a really amazing raising your vibration audios and if they want to contact me personally there's a contact there and they can send through uh, an email and uh, yeah I always offer a, a complimentary consultation call just to see how I can help them if we're a great fit and uh, yeah I'd love to help as many people as possible especially now with all the unrest and you know the health issues and the mindset issues and people you know perhaps struggling with uh, imposter syndrome or you know all the things that business owners and you know anyone really is struggling with at the moment um yeah wonderful thing about I, the work that is it's rapid i i absolutely love everything that you uh, you shared today it's you explain things in such a clear uh, way that's easy to grasp for everyone listening, I really encourage you to go away and answer that question. So what does your idol life look like? Or if you feel like you've got your idol life, maybe there's some specific things. What does your idol wife look like? Your idol husband look like? Let's, uh, let's be specific on that. Let's be clear. Let's ask that question. It's going to make a major difference. Let's get that into your reticular activation system and you'll be amazed at how quickly things show up. Maya, thank you so much for all of your time and your energy today. I really, uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Lovely, lovely speaking with you, Kevin.